I've gone live. Sorry about that. Uh, hello and welcome to another episode of With Enough Prep Time. I'm your host, the Nerd Man, and I'm here today with uh, somebody I am a big uh, fan of uh, who I've been watching for a while. Uh, Sean Stackhouse, man, what's going on? What's going you on, know? man? I'm happy to be on the channel, my friend. Thank you very much for joining me. So, uh, yeah, we've uh, it's taken us some time due to different time zones and be having a pretty sleepy, dozy uh, weekend, but uh, mm -hmm. we finally, finally made it. Um, so, yeah, we were just talking about like. Um, we we found out about the synopsis for uh, you know the Zack Snyder um, uh, uh, basically um, Justice League Part One and Two. Uh, but first of all, do you want to just introduce yourself, tell people about your channel and everything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Sean Stackhouse. Uh, you can find me over at Sean Stackhouse Reacts on YouTube. I'm at Sean Stackhouse on Twitter. My DMs are open. Um, basically, it's a pop culture channel, man. I am a DC loving, red blooded, you know, uh, man. I, I love, I love everything DC. You know, we we uh, we veer off into pretty much every pop culture lane that I can, I can get my brain around, you know, music, movies, TV, uh, toys, you know, uh, whatever. And, cool. uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of what fun. What music are you into, man? I didn't even know you were into. Oh yeah. I'm a musician, man. I've been a musician since I was 13 oh, awesome. years old. Um, my band, uh, it's called haunting Heather. And, uh, we, we released a debut album. It sold out over in Europe and, um, nice. Yeah, and we're still it's kind of the Def Leppard curse. We're still working on that that uh that so next album. <laughs> so it's mainly kind of like rock and this kind of rock kind pop. Of rock pop. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, like key like keyboards and guitars and drums and vocals and you know bass and that type of stuff. I guess people would consider it AOR uh uh or or melodic rock, even though some of it can get pretty heavy, but there are Ooh. a number of Cool. Have you have you got a bass guitar guitar in the in the back oh, like yeah, around yeah. you? Because I, yeah. I need you to put like play the Justice League riff oh. while I'm <laughs> while I'm reading this out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm afraid I I don't know that. You know what? <laughs> That'll be awesome. That's the way we have to do it, man. I know. <laughs> No, I was I was saying just before we went on live that I I, I wish I could um, listen to uh, you know like what's it called the uh, you know when you can um, play the songs uh, while having the headphones on or play something to hear the sound while having the headphones on. Exactly. I don't know how to do that on this uh, Monop Monopoly though. Because otherwise, I would I would actually put on a little uh, Justice League riff to uh, Zack Snyder's magnum opus. Are you ready for this? I am ready. Let's do this. This is <laughs> this is going to be uh, hopefully quite fun. Um, all right, so <laughs> this is going to be uh, time. I'm your host. Oh, that was my computer. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right, man. Uh, okay. I just wanted to go thumbs up the video really quick. Ah, uh, cool, cool. So, can you see it? Yep. Should we make it bigger for you, or can uh, you read it? You know what? I can expand my I can expand my page. Um, yeah, we should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read everything because I haven't read this yet. I've been trying to stay away from it so we can react to it together. Um. At any point uh, that you want me to pause, um, just uh, you know, let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll stop. And also, okay. by the way, I watched our last video, and sometimes I don't shut up. So if you want me to shut up, just let me know. And uh, you know, if I'm no, talking you a know bit what? too I, much, you were making a lot of points, uh, and and. and uh, when it comes to DC, man, you know, I, I, I love to listen. I love to, I just love to be in, in the middle of the conversation. So it's all yeah. good. 
Yeah, we did a great, uh, like it was just a long two DC fanboys just like yeah. uh, fanboying out about their Superman love. Uh, what was it called again? The, oh, uh, the Future of Superman? Or, or like The Fate of Superman? Or, the or, Fate or of Superman. Yeah. yeah, four and a half hours, man. Four yeah. and a half hours. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so we start from the beginning. So uh, I'm just going to read this red note uh, in case it has any relevance. So everything you're about to read was put together by Zack Snyder, Chris Terrio, and featured art by Jim Lee. It was the original story layout for Justice League 2 and 2A. This was created in 2016 before they rewrote the first Justice League 2017, which is now as the Snyder Cut Zack Snyder's Justice League. All of this subject is uh, all of this is subject to change should uh, Snyder be allowed to continue his story, but this is his original story. Okay. So Justice League Part 2 and 2A Although originally pitched as one film, we believe the character arcs of our heroes and villains along the epic battle with Darkseid, which unites the League, the world, and the entire DC universe warrants two films. However, this does not mean that you have two films centered on, I'm just reading like in epic voice, just some notes for some reason. <laughs> so let me go through this bit quickly. So, uh, to, uh, it does not mean that you have two films centered on Darkseid's invasion. Rather, Justice League 2 would be a very grounded, personal, and character-driven film that would follow the Justice League both together and separately as they mend old wounds on the road to becoming better and stronger heroes, while Lex Luthor rec recruits a, a league of his own, made up of revenge-driven villains introduced in the hero solo films. So Dr. Maru, Wonder Woman 2. 2017, Leonard Snart, The Flash 2018, Orm, uh, and Black Manta, Aquaman 2018, and The Riddler, Ben Affleck's The Batman. These villains would link all of the DC films together. I like that. So, but they were going with Captain Cold as opposed to the reverse Flash for, for, for Barry? Or... Uh, yeah, they were going for Captain Cold. I think these are supposed to be like very, like the human villains, right? Like the so bunch like, of like the, the first, the first line of uh, like their their uh, rogues gallery. Okay. Yeah, I and and I like that because it's kind of like a little bit deep cut. It's not choosing the obvious. Um, sure. You know, like Doctor Maru, Doctor Poison, which is a really deep cut for Wonder Woman. I was shocked. That she was even in Wonder Woman uh, one, and that when was I good. That movie, I was like, I mean, honestly, I was like, I've heard that name before. I don't think they made this up for just this movie, and I had to look it up. It's like, oh damn, okay, yeah. that deep cut. Yeah, it is a deep cut, um, but yeah, but it worked. I think I think she should have been fleshed out a little bit more, but it worked. Um, and yeah, Leonard Snart, which is. I did. I didn't know that. That that's uh, Captain Cold's name, Leonard Snart. Yep, Leonard Snart. Oh, okay. Um, is a uh, um, uh, fire uh, man. I can't think of his name, but uh, yeah, the the, yeah. the dude with fire, Mc McRory, Captain Cold's partner in the Flash TV show. Well, they were. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, if they flesh these guys out, I don't know why they'd have Orm and Black Manta. It would seems to me like Black Manta would have fit better in this, and then and Riddler would be cool to see. Uh, you know what what their version of the Riddler would have looked like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're well, that demented Riddler in in the Batman, uh, which it seems like he's he's going to be a cross between the Riddler and Hush, um, which is interesting. Mm, oh yeah, no, the Riddler in that looks like amazing, but I, I guess this would have been a much more, I don't know, cartoony, I guess. Like, traditional Riddler? Yeah, like a more traditional Riddler, that's what I mean, not cartoony. It's Zack Snyder, it's obviously going to be dark and edgy. Yeah. A Riddler with a like, like his, the question mark, like, kind of cut into his head by a... 
by a knife, like, <laughs> like by a blade. Like Zack <laughs> Snyder, everybody has to be branded by something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's continue. Like Empire Strikes Back and the last Harry Potter films, Justice League 2 would end with a cliffhanger, revealing only at the end of the film that Lex and his league are connected to Darkseid. Then flash-forwarding five years into the future where what? Darkseid has taken the Earth. So wait, wait. So it's the first film they're fighting these guys alone like dark side isn't even in it yeah that sounds so like I, to me. I think that's quite a leap i think yeah. that's quite a leap in storytelling uh I, I mean first of all like generally speaking the legion of doom tries to stay away from dark side as much as possible because they know like no matter how powerful the legion of doom is dark side is going to whoop that ass mm. you know <laughs> you know, Lex is is uh, uh, manical. You know, like he, he's he's manic. He wants to be in control all mm. the time. And if you bring in another alpha dog like Darkseid, Lex is not going to like that. Yeah, no, I I think you're right. Uh, I mean, this Lex seems like he's going to become like you know Dracula's Igor, right? Mm -hmm. To Darkseid. Do you know who Igor is? Yes. Yeah, to Dracula, right? So it yep. seems to me like that's what they're going with with Lex Luthor, which that really is far off. Because I I kind of tolerate Lex Luthor in BVS. No, I don't tolerate him. Sorry, let me not speak ill of I Lex Luthor. Him. I know you can't stand him. I like him. I actually like him. I genuinely do. I think Jesse Eisenberg and Ben Affleck were miscast. And, um, you know they did a good job but it wasn't worth all of the hate that came with their casting do you understand what i mean by no that? no no the, the hate the hate outweighed i mean it, there was way too much hate for sure just like you know I, I can tell you that i'm not excited for the snyder cut uh you know uh and the snyder cult what have you but still i i can sit here and tell you that there is way too much hate surrounding surrounding all of this man it's it's just a movie we're either gonna like it or we're not gonna like it and you know uh bvs wasn't a perfect film but you know i i enjoyed myself yeah. you know I, I just didn't think like uh jesse eisenberg you know um i know that he wasn't going for for lex senior he was going for more of an alexander um but he 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 seemed like I mean, he was a polar opposite of Lex, you know? I mean, he, he was like, he, like he needed Ritalin. He needed like a constant, like uh Ritalin pill, like every five minutes. To but I, I understood what they were doing because, all right, look, Lex Luthor, let's, let's, let's talk about it. What is Lex Luthor? Let, 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 we're two Superman fanboys, right? What to you is like, there's got to be, Things that you'd like to have, mm -hmm. things that you absolutely must have in a Lex Luthor character, and things that are just, you know, that you don't want, right? So what so, what, what makes up a Lex Luthor character for you? Because For I, me, I uh, Lex Luthor thinks, he honestly thinks that he is the hero of the story. Right. He, he honestly believes that Superman is such a big threat and that Lex is the only person with the resources to stop him. And, he and is that necessary? That's a necessary uh, component of Lex Luthor for you? For me, yes. Okay, interesting. I don't agree, but... <laughs> That's but, okay. <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, I, I, think, I, I think Lex uh, has to have... Uh, First of all, let, let, let me let me say that you know uh, the further that we can get away from like the real estate, Gene Hackman, uh, Lex Luthor, yeah. the better. Like if, like the old Max Fleischer cartoons showed Lex Luthor, you know, uh, basically as a mad scientist, yeah. and I would like to really kind of revisit the mad scientist Lex Luthor, which they've kind of okay. done through the Justice League cartoons and stuff like that. Um, 
but I feel like, you, you know, mad scientist, uh, with a side ambition of, uh, you know, becoming president of the United States, you know, and then the world, things like that, all the while putting things in place to pr- protect everybody and himself, mostly himself from Superman. I get it. I get it. And that's your, like, you're talking about now a story, right? Like, that would be your ideal story for that. Yes, yes. But that, what you described isn't, like, that is Lex Luthor. Like, if 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 it isn't that, then it's not. Do you know what I mean? Because you're saying oh, no, basically, no, no. you're, you're saying basically that um, Jesse Eisenberg isn't Lex Luthor. So what I want to understand from you is what are the core characteristics, like the things okay. about Lex Luthor that have to be there, otherwise it's not Lex Luthor. That's what I'm trying okay, to get. I can answer that in uh, one actor's name, Michael Rosenbaum. Okay. But that's just a version of Lex Luthor. That that's just a version of Lex, but I think I think he has a little bit of everything uh, that uh, you know I kind of like to see in Lex. And, uh, yeah, Michael Rosenbaum, man, he, he, he had, he had the heart, but then he could, he could go stone cold at, you know, like a second later. Um, I, I love, I love Michael Rosenbaum as, uh, Lex Luthor. I think he was awesome. So yeah, no yeah. arguments from me there, but. So what about you? I mean, like, right, I'll tell you, you my core things so that okay. maybe it will get, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So for me, Lex. He doesn't have to be a businessman, but I like him as a businessman. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll just put that as like something that uh, is nice, but it's not necessary, right? So he has to be a businessman. All right. So um, the things that I think are core to it for me is that he's a genius, like the smartest man on earth. Yes, absolutely. Um, that he um, that he believes that because you were saying that he he believes himself to be the hero of the story i think that's sometimes true but not necessary i think the thing that really really um is different about him is that he believes that superman um it, he's like he's jealous essentially or envious of superman's very existence it like it negates his existence because he sees himself as the Superman. He's the brilliant one. He's the that. genius. He's the genius. He's the one who ultimately, like Lex Luthor, if it wasn't for Superman, would actually be um, spending his time trying to save humanity and trying to use Absolutely. his in- intellect and whatever to improve humanity. But just because Superman's there, and Superman is doing all these things and he's getting all of the attention or whatever from Lex Luthor. That drives Lex Luthor crazy and he he, he, he must he must destroy him because mm-hmm. of that. And that's it. That's for me, Lex Luthor. He's a super genius, um, probably the smartest man in the world, and then that characteristic. And any character that falls into line with that for me is Lex Luthor. So Lex Luthor to me could even be, you know, well, I, I'm not going to go there because uh, then I'll destroy my own point. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this, like Lex Luthor can be young. He can be old. Sure. Um, he can be a businessman. He can be a scientist. He can be a politician. Um, he can, you know, he has to be something of high standing, you know, he can't just be like a, uh, 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 you know, a a bum, (laughs) like he has to be something his, uh, he, he, he could have money that comes from his parents or he could have made his money by himself. Um, any of those things are not necessary components. They're just like ways you can do your version of Lex Luthor, but that's super genius. And that motivation is so, like, the important thing to me. And that's why, for me, I think Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor was basically um, this... uh, And I'm going to go back to the Igor thing, by the way. Sorry. Oh, no problem. 
Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor was um, this millennial modern version of Lex Luthor, essentially. Mm -hmm. It was a Lex Luthor that exists as like, um, a, you know, a modern tech billionaire or like, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, where where where's the where, what's the state where they do all the technology or the the place where oh, at California? Uh, no maybe. no, um, bloody hell! Uh, where like Facebook and Google and all of those places? Yeah, are. that's all. It's out in um, I forget the. It's something something. It's a it's a place in California. It's called uh, Silicon 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 Valley. Valley. There you go, Silicon yeah, Valley. There, there it's you out go. In Cali, yeah. Oh right, it is in Cali. All right, sorry. So Silicon Valley, right? He's like a Silicon Valley tech billionaire. My problem mm -hmm. is he shouldn't. Have, his father shouldn't have made him rich in BVS. He should have um, been a self-made person. Uh, if he was a self-made person, I think the whole story would have been stronger. But none that, like his genius because he's so clever but he was like that kind of billionaire and i believe he was a little bit autistic as well like he was so smart yeah, I can see. I can see that, that he had become almost autistic and therefore it was like you know it was that kind of person and he was also like a psychopath as well basically so it's that type of person he had a lot of stuff going on <laughs> right 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 he was but he he was that type of person, um, uh, but with Lex's motivations, where he just hated and wanted to destroy Superman, no matter what, even if it meant destroying the world. Right? It was he 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 just had to destroy Superman. So really I I thought that was an interesting take, but they should have swapped actors, or they should have they should have used another actor for it. I I agree, but but then I guess they never really made. His his uh, motives super super clear about why, and yeah. you know that that I, I mean, Zack Snyder I think uh, was just basing it off of well you know the the story, the the rivalry between uh, Superman and, and and Lex Luthor goes back you know uh, decades and decades so people are just going to accept it, you know we don't really need to go into any exposition, um, but. To explain why, I yeah. think I think he did explain why, but I think that um, again, that uh, Jesse Eisenberg's performance was too distracting, so people weren't listening to him. Do you know what I mean? I think after a while, people just switched off because it was too, like, <laughs> you know, th that kind of thing. And um, if it was somebody a little bit karma who knew when to turn it up you yeah. know uh, and when to turn it down i think you people would have heard more where this character was actually coming from i think basically um he was like uh, you know he was he had some theological reason you know for hating superman he had like the, he saw superman as this god and he couldn't deal sure with the fact that there was a being in this world, given that he sees himself as the smartest, most powerful because of his wealth person in the world, he couldn't deal with anything in this world being greater than him. So it came down to the, and, and, it came uh, down to the classical yeah. motivation of yeah, yeah. Luther. But yeah, just I think you're right. put through this theological lens, really. Um, mm. But yeah, the the thing I was going to say is it looks to me like he they've turned him now into some Igor character to um, Dark Side, and I don't know how I'll feel about that because, as you said, Lex Luthor should be his own person, yeah. right? He doesn't bow Luthor down. Never do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't bow Unless down. Unless he's forcibly made to do it, you know, uh, like in uh, the uh, Justice League, uh, Dark Dark Side. Uh, like a, apocalypse, or whatever it was, but even then he was like slipping information to the resistance, you know. And so, uh, that was yeah, kind of a weak version of Lex as well, though, wasn't it? It was, it was, and yeah. you know, Batman was the one that was like the right hand man. That, yeah, I was like, oh damn, they broke yeah. Batman. Okay, 
<laughs> all right, should we go? We'll go on. So yes, um, do it. All right, so like it was like X Empire fast forward uh, when it were Dark Side on Earth. So the heroes arcs throughout part two and two A. So Superman with Lois's help. Um, Superman, with Lois's help, the back end of the dead Superman, will learn to become Clark Kent again, feeling more human than ever as he and Lois start a family. Wonder Woman will reconnect with the Amazons and her mother, eventually becoming their new queen and rejoining these isolationist warriors with the outside world. Aquaman, with the help of Mera, will bring the Seven Kingdoms together, becoming the one true king building a new alliance between the oceans and the surface. The Flash will free himself from the past, releasing his father from the pri from prison and, cyborg and with Cyborg's help and learning how to master his time traveling abilities, literally becoming able to be in two places at once. Cyborg will evolve- I have a problem with that. I'm sorry, okay. I don't oh. mean to cut you off. The Flash doesn't need Cyborg's help to uh, learn about the Speed Force and and master his ability. I think that that is just a cop out. They're trying to find they're trying to find uh, something for Cyborg to do, and uh, yeah. I, I think that that's 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 just crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I well, you know, it could work, I guess. Uh, like, to it give could. him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, Does you're right. I mean, the Flash, The no one understands the Speed Force like the Flash or any form of the Flash. Jay Garrick, Wally West, you know, Barry Allen. Uh, they, they, they understand the Speed Force because it's, it's what runs through them. And Cyborg, I mean, what, what does he know about the Speed Force? I don't know. I, I, I think that's kind of weak misdirection in my in my opinion, but it's all good. I don't know if Barry's supposed to be a scientist in this version or not. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he at the end, he was st studying like criminal. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't studying forensics, right? Do you remember at the end of uh, Justice League? Yeah. So Batman gives him the money to go study like police something well that's like, true yeah so i don't know if he's an actual scientist and that bothers me like barry allen should be a forensics guy i, I agree mm -hmm. i agree with you 100 mm. percent. and i i don't mind them meshing barry allen barry allen and wally west together uh no. how do you feel about oh you don't mind either no, because I mean they kind of did that even with uh, like the 1990s John Wesley ship, ship Flash TV show, you know uh, they kind of uh, meshed Wally West and Barry Allen characteristics together. So I'm kind of used to it by now. They did it. In, oh yeah, no, they didn't do it in the animated show. Actually, they just made it no. really work. But I, because I, the thing is, I can see like I like Barry Allen in certain contexts. Um, but I do think that, um, you, you know, uh, Wally West has the more kind of fun personality, but Barry Allen's got the much better origin story. So I agree. So to me, I just like, I, I just prefer having like, um, them kind of mixed together. But the other thing I was going to mention, because I sent it to you just in case I forget on, uh, like I sent it to you on Twitter is that, and this is what I want to look at Superman, like as a lens of Superman through, um, mm -hmm. is that Zack Snyder doesn't understand Superman for one basic reason. I've kind of boiled it down to this one thing now. It's because he sees him as an alien rather than the ultimate American immigrant. Facts. Yes, I, I, I will agree with that 100%. So I'm reading even this line where he's like, he can learn to become Clark Kent again. What? Why would Superman have to learn to become Clark Kent again? Clark you Kent know? is is who he is, just like Batman is is who Bruce Wayne is. You know, yeah. Bruce Wayne is the mask. Uh, Superman's suit is is the mask. I mean, uh, I think Clark he's Kent, more Clark Kent than he is Superman. Yes, absolutely. 
to me anyway. I th or at least the best versions of him are right. The be where where you've got the best books, whether it's Chris Reeves or it's like certain versions in the comics, um, All Star Superman. I think whenever he's more Clark than he is um, Superman is where he's he's a more interesting character. I think. I agree. I agree because see, like Clark doesn't need any anything to be Superman. He could be wearing Nikes and and uh, sweatpants and a T-shirt, and and you know if he needs to go into full blown Superman mode, he can. Mm, mm, mm. He doesn't need any anything. Nothing gives him as long as the sun is uh, yellow. Uh, he's good to go. He's good to go. Yeah. It's true, but I, I want to—I I wanted to just mention that to you as a kind of thing because um, I'm going to come back to that often. All right, so let's go through this a little bit faster now. So I'm going to do a page at a time, and then uh, we can talk about our notes after. Cool. So uh, this is page two, I hope. And it starts off at the Louvre in Paris. Diana and Menelipi, the Amazon who came to warn Diana about Steppenwolf, discover there may be a way to remember the path back to Themyscira. Diana must use the lasso on herself to unlock her mind. It's a dangerous process. But Diana uh, wants to help Meni Mena Mena Menelipi home. And Diana wants to see here see her mother again, even if she might reject her. Diana puts on the, uh, puts the lasso on and suddenly she's overwhelmed by visions. In the beginning, they're wonderful. For the first time in over a century, Diana sees her home soaring over the island. She sees the Amazons and finally her mother. <laughs> but then her visions grow dark. Diana sees herself as the god of war in battle with Superman as she kills him. Diana cries out, uh, Menelipi frees Diana from the lasso. Despite the pain and confusion, Diana remembers the way home. In a central city uh, courthouse, Barry is at a hearing, thanks to Cyborg, Iris, and a, troop, uh, and a troop of lawyers from Wayne. The state has examined new evidence that Barry and Vic have presented and agree to reopen Her Henry Allen's case. Barry is elated. Along the underwater... Um, on, along an underwater continual shelf, Aquaman and Mera are in a violent battle with the last, <laughs> pardon me, sorry, of the Seven Kingdoms, the Unseen. It explodes around tidal pools and active lava flows. Arthur has the seventh, ki as the seventh, ki as the, has the seventh king on the ground, his trident at his throat. The seventh king tells him to kill him. Arthur says he wants an alliance, but the seventh king refuses. Arthur leaves frustrated. The last kingdom refuses to unite. In the Batcave, Cyborg upgrades the cave, even providing a female AI voice for Alfred, who has become a father figure of sorts, looking at the empty cave around them. Um, Cyborg as... Ooh, looking at the empty cave around them, Cyborg as Alfred asks Alfred, why is he never home? Alfred sol solemnly replies, because uh, then he'd have to face himself. Batman and Lois on the hunt for Lex Luthor. Batman moves um, deep into the Canadian wilderness during uh, the uh, doing second sorry, Batman moves deep into the Canadian wilderness doing second following following up on a lead that Lex may have been uh, sighted in one of the, the remote towns. He fights his way through a secret location only to discover not Luther hiding out, but the Riddler. Awake for days, maybe weeks, Riddler has a long unkempt beard, his fingers dirty, his rantings written across the walls of his cabin. He looks at Batman, a man possessed. Luther asked the question, I had to know the answer. Lois is also on Luther's trail. She located uh, Dr. Maru's lair in the Brazilian jungle. Lois writes everything in her journal, keeping it offline and private. She grows pale as she realizes who Maru is and what Lex might be up to. He's forming a team of his own. 
Back in the Caladian wilderness, Batman faces off against the Riddler. He tells Bruce about um, about Lex, uh, how Lex came to him for information. Lex presented the anti-life equation, the riddle of life itself, and the Riddler solved it. He knows what it can do. And once it's unlocked, Lex makes uh, life meaningless. The Riddler raises a gun, but points it at his own head. Time to solve the last riddle. Batman. Batman shocked as Riddler kills himself. <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've been and trying I to follow. My I've, been, were bad. <laughs> I've been trying to follow along, man. But it, you know, I mean, so much of this is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There were some points I liked in it. I, I did too. I did, I but, then, but then you get to like the anti-life equation and Riddler's like, kaboom. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Why would you kill Riddler like that? That's such a waste. Um, <laughs> that is such a ridiculous waste of a character. Like, you just kill Riddler like that. Um, so there were bits I liked in it. Yeah. I, you know, obviously, I'm a bit biased on this. You know, my Wonder Woman love, and I like, um, you know, that I, I obviously like the idea of, um, rid- uh, sorry, Lex Luthor having a rogues gallery. So that oh, bit I kind of was into. Um, I don't know why Lois is hunting anyone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why is she hunting villains? I, I I don't know. That's not Lois's. That's not her thing, man. I mean, she she hunts down stories. Yeah. That's it. You know. Yeah. I mean, she, she, uh, dude. I, I I don't know. Snyder, yeah. I, if this is what Snyder presented, uh, Warner Brothers, no wonder Warner Brothers panicked. You know, they're like, uh, yeah, this is crazy. You're using our characters' names. <laughs> uh, I'm happy about that, but I think that you've uh, failed to connect their names with their personality types. Yeah, this is it's a little bit overwhelmingly crazy. I don't know what quite is going on. Um I I I well, you know, again my Wonder Woman bias. I like the fact that she fights Superman as the god of war in battle. Um, I like that they gave her some respect in that. Like, I don't know how big that battle would have been. Um, it should have been pretty massive, man. Um, because I mean, I, I, I still maintain that after a while, Superman can, can, uh, whoop Diana's ass, but uh, I mean, it's going to be a long, long battle. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it should be a long battle anyway, but you're, you, you might be right. But again, you know, magic weapons. So, <laughs> but um, we had this debate, like guys, like uh, it was a properly nerdy debate. Um, yeah, where it started losing me is like everything else, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like and, and- I, the Superman one Woman fight was fun. I like the fact that they brought back. Uh, Dr. Maru and and Mm -hmm. they have Riddler and everything like that. That's kind of cool that they have. And I like the fact Riddler figures out the anti-life equation. That's kind of cool. Gives him some like he figures out the riddle but like isn't the anti-life equation a bit above his pay grade? grade? Yeah, very much so. And, and, And then like what I've been hearing about like the Snyder Cut that we're gonna get is that uh that that Bruce and and Lois have a kid, and then wait so, wait wait don't spoil it for me, man. No, no <laughs> I don't I don't know. These are exciting stuff to <laughs> these, these are just rumors that I've heard, you know, uh, from just YouTubers. So I mean, yeah. nobody knows for sure, you know. Yeah, but man. Bruce and Lois have a kid, while all all the while, you know, Bruce is mourning, you know, supposedly mourning Clark, and and uh, something happens, and then Superman ends up raising the kid as his own and i i don't know man it, it, it i i hope i hope those are just rumors because i don't i don't even understand that but then again that kind of lines up with all, all of oh, that as far as, you know with the way it doesn't make sense well yeah i mean that page was a lot 
you know, I didn't know what was going on um, really. So the, it's hard to even really say anything about that. Like yeah. other than, well, there was some cool images. I like the fact that there was something else that bothered me in it, but I can't like, I don't know. Yeah. Everything else seems fine, I guess. But like the main thing was like Riddler um, killing himself. I was just like, what? All right, Why so would Batman and Lois go off looking for Lex Luthor together? I mean, yeah, it's, why? It's, Bat yeah. Batman doesn't need Lois to tag along. Batman can do it by himself. Right. That was weird. That was definitely weird. I was like, so Lois is a superhero now, or what's, <laughs> what's going on? Why is Lois? Like, uh, Snyder just injects Lois into the weirdest places in his movies. Like, ever since Man of Steel, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why is he, you know, uh, injecting her into, um, you know, like, she's going on the ship in Man of Steel. They ask for her, you know, she's she has to put the little Superman object or like a, a kryptonian object to like start the world that i you know it, it was all bizarre I know, at least I know. in bvs she was doing what you know like what she was supposed to you know yeah so so after reading that, that yeah. uh after reading that are, are are you are you with me on like just like uh firing everybody and starting fresh after flashpoint <laughs> Because not yet, man. I'm still into it, man. I'm still <laughs> I'm still into it. I'm waiting to see where where Lois gets it on with Batman. That's that's gonna be the bit. You're gonna have to give me a like a funky or like a funk beat to that. You're gonna have to get pedal and get your you know, and man, something's going down. Alfred, don't if there's a sock on the uh on the clock upside in Wayne Manor, you know, don't come down. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Justice League. Okay. So this is, was that Justice League one? Apparently. Think, no, that couldn't have been. All right. It's because this is page three, I think. So just the, the Justice League United. We open with the Justice League in um, acting during a natural disaster, working as efficient, powerful team um, they've become weeks after Justice League won. Uh, they act together. They save lives. No, this can't be the right page. Can't be. This looks more familiar. So I think I confused the pages. Well, you know, that's what happens when, when it looks like you have a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Wonder Woman and uh, Mini, uh, uh, Manalipe arrive in uh, Themyscira. Diana's unsure what her mother's reaction will be, but a tearful, overjoyed Hippolyta embraces her. The queen declares there will be a celebration unlike any other in Amazon history. Her daughter is home. The oceans, um, Aquaman and Mera, br bring the final kingdom of the seven, the unseen, into alliance for the first time. This sounds like the end of the fucking film. I've like completely confused. Like, there's something going on. What with. about the trench, though, man? I mean, we were promised the movie about the trench. Yeah, no, it's a bloody hell. This is annoying me now. Okay, that's the end. This is confusing. <laughs> maybe, maybe that is. I don't like. I put them in order of um, how they were posted. I mean, as messed up as everything is, man, maybe that is the correct order. Maybe it's, yeah, page three. All right, fine. I'll try it this way. Maybe it works. So, uh, the Justice League United. We open with the Justice League in acting during a natural disaster, working as uh, the efficient, powerful team they've become. Weeks after Justice League won, they act together, they save lives, but they're refugees, so political tension is high. But they act together, but they're refugees. 
So political tension is high. The world is on edge. In the aftermath, the Justice League regroup at the only headquarters they know, the Batcave. Why? Why is that their headquarters? It's I mean, Batman it's going to be a Hall of Justice by now, right? Yeah, right. Like, all right. Um, Flash is enthusiastic whilst... Like, why would that be the headquarters? First of all, Batman is not... I mean, Batman is a loner. He's not going to be loaning out his cave to, like, the entire <laughs> league to come and go whenever they please. Yeah, you like, know, that's going to, you're, it's going to bring more, more attention to what's going on, you know, and, like, you know, you're going to blow Batman's secret hideout. Batman's going to kill you all. Yeah, that's a secret. Like, that's a really secret place where he keeps plans to kill the Justice League. Right. I don't think he's going to want them, like, just willy-nilly coming in. Like, um, all right, fine. He's They're in the Batcave for some reason rather than the Hall of Justice or anywhere else. Um, Flash is enthusiastic while Superman remains a bit distant, at least with Batman. And Aquaman is facing a continued skepticism of the surface um, world and his involvement in it um, by the people of Atlantis. Wonder Woman relates to Arthur. Her people abandoned this world long ago. It is clear that although the League is united, the world is not. The League goes back to their individual lives um, to mend old wounds, except for Batman, who's dealing with fresh ones, left alone in the cave. Bruce and Lois secretly meets, uh, Bruce, Bruce and Lois, Bruce secretly meets with Lois, both of them still searching for Lex Luthor. There's tension between them since Superman has returned. The, meeting, the meeting ends after Lois tells Bruce and Superman, Bruce, that Superman needs her more than ever. Bruce knows um, Lois is hiding something else. The meeting ends after Lois tells Bruce that Superman needs her more than ever. Okay, fine. Uh, Lex Luthor recruiting his own league. Meanwhile, deep in the Brazilian jungle, this sounds like the first page. Uh, meanwhile, deep in the Brazilian jungle, Lex locates Dr. Maru, last seen in Wonder Woman 2017, still alive, experimenting on herself, prolonging her life and testing new chemical weapons on unfortunate human lab rats. Oh, good. Human lab rats. That's good. Um, oh, yeah. like an obsession, uh, like an obsessed stalker, Maru has pen, uh, spent decades collecting information and artifacts on Diana and the Amazons. Now that Diana has become known to the world, Lex offers Maru a, chain, a chance at revenge, the same revenge he wants on Diana's friends, Superman and Batman. Maru accepts, Lex smiles, uh, then let it begin. Why would Dr. Maru want revenge on Diana? From uh, Wonder Woman 1, just because she stopped her plan. I'd have to rewatch Wonder Woman one. It's been a while, but uh, didn't Wonder Woman do some? Uh, I don't know. She I don't saved know. her. She basically let her live. I don't yeah, really... but, you know when you're dealing with these crazy, uh, yeah, uh, okay. crazy people. Oh, you got um, Akashana, uh, Aka Akashana. I'm sorry if I pronounce your your name. In, incorrectly in the chat. What's up, Sean? Hey, it's up to your channel. Ah, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. It seems reasonable that she'd want revenge. I guess she's a villain, so she must want to. I would have thought she'd want to find out where I don't know, like Themyscira was, or something like that, rather than revenge. Since Diana let her live, but okay, I'll go with it. She's a villain. It's fine. Um, in the uh, Atacama at Desert, with Maru's help, Lex breaks Orm and uh, Black Manta out of the desert prison, where they were imprisoned at the end of Aquaman 2018. Outside the, uh, of Central City in Iron Heights Penitentiary, Lex finds L Len Snart, where he was left in Flash 2018, and offers Len a chance to advance his weaponry and take down the fastest man alive. Intercut, 
Lex and the villains with the Justice League returning to their lives. In Metropolis, Superman asked Lois when she was going to tell him. Tell you what, Clark? Superman says he can't hear the se- uh, um, he can hear the second heartbeat, and she shouldn't call him Clark. Clark is dead. The world believes that too. Superman mistakes Lois' hesitation for fear. It won't hurt you, he says. What? <laughs> I did not understand a single thing that just. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sorry, is he saying that? Clark Superman is, is always Superman now, and Clark is is dead. Apparently so, but yet Clark can come back oh. after the death and return of Superman. No questions asked, right? But he can't come back after this. Wait a second. So let me get this straight. So this is the arc, right, towards um, Superman finally becoming Superman and leaving Clark behind who he no 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 because he's supposed to become the classical optimistic superman by the end of his five five uh story arc by um zack snyder right yes so zack snyder sees superman as somebody who isn't even got the disguise with clark kent he 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 hates clark kent it's not even superman he hates he hates clark kent he hates who he hates he hates everything associated with that character. I don't think any of it makes sense to him. And he can't just deal. I think I was watching um, Jody's Corner the other day. And um, it, he said something, actually, that really made sense to me. And I was like, um, like say, I don't like Spider-Man, right? Mm. You know, And this is what he was saying. He doesn't like Spider-Man. But if you're doing a Spider-Man film, you'll respect the law, right? You'll respect the law and you'll try and make the best Spider-Man film you can make. So that's what I don't understand what his problem is. Just respect the law. Stop trying to create your own fucking character. Like, what is that? That's what Jody never wanted, man. I mean, it it breaks Jody's heart when, when, when he has to give these scathing reviews on dc because he is like dc to him is what dc is to me you know Mm. uh it breaks his heart when when uh like all you have to do is respect the lore man and 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 follow the like uh the actual outlines of the characters and then you're good yeah yeah like you're gonna make we haven't even seen fucking clark kent yet up until this point we have still not seen Clark Kent. If it was up to uh, if it was up to Zack Snyder, we've had Man of Steel, BV. All right, you saw Clark Kent in BVS, just walking around on a ship saying nothing. And you saw, and then and then and then, and then yeah. somebody tells him how cool Batman is, and and uh, somebody asks him to punch super uh, punch Batman, and that's Clark Kent. That's all you yeah. saw. All you saw is him standing around with his square jaw. Mm. That you know, like it must have been. He must have had three lines in the whole fucking movie. I know Clark. Clark Kent is uh, just as important to that duality as Superman is. Yeah, it's crazy to me. And then you're just going to get rid of him. So now I understand what he means by he has to find Clark Kent by the end of it. That's wild, man. That's wild because you, for this character, you don't. Ha- he's he's doing things backwards, you know, and upside down. This is not how you approach this character. No, no. <laughs> I, and and I'm going to be fair to him. Some of this, I do like the fact that he's using. You know, as I said, I like the fact he's using all the villains. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way he's using the villains, I thought it's kind of cool. I like the Doctor like Maroon. Experimenting on, you know, because uh, yeah. as a Wonder Woman fan, Dr. Maru, Dr. Poison, I've read quite a bit on her, and she should have been a really cool villain from Wonder- in Wonder Woman. That's what yeah. she does. Like, she creates these, like, crazy, um, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, like, military-grade kind of, like, um, 
what do you call like uh, mustard gas? What what is it? It's, oh right, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but not not mustard gas itself, but like mm. that kind of weapon. Something um, chemical. Yeah. Chemical weapon. Thank you. Sorry, I'm so yeah. it's too early in the morning. So she creates all these chemical weapons, but she tests them on humans. That's yeah. what she does. She like she'll put them in like, you know, a room or whatever, and like trap it off and like just test it on like the humans to see like how it impacts them. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes she's got like uh, things where she'll go into um, the mystical realms and like you know. Uh, mix science with like you know mysticism and all of that kind of stuff but in any case she's cool right so I like what she what he's doing with um, her and I liked what he was doing with a, a number of you know like uh, getting all of these guys together um, but what yeah it's just stupid like he's he's such a Batman fanboy you can just see like why the fuck would they meet in the Batcave? You know? I don't know. I, I don't know. Makes Other than Batman's cool. I'm a Batman fanboy. So I'm going to make Batman as important as possible in my story. And I, 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 I have huge, I have huge problems with that because Batman, like I said, he's a loner and yeah, he might let them use the cave for, for a little bit, but I mean, he, Batman is not going to want, like them all up in his man not in the ship. they're not and he's not holding fucking you know like uh you know like let's get together meetings you know every friday you know do you know what i mean it's, it's not well they're not playing uh justice league uh you know fantasy football league on, exactly uh, every thursday you know exactly <laughs> like magic the gathering and shit like this is bullshit, man. You don't do that with uh, with with Batman. He's a fucking loner, and like, if, as a Batman fanboy as well that he is, that 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 seems so puzzling that he can't even get that basic. It's not like he's saying in this part, like the the world is fine, right? It's this isn't um the th this isn't the um what's it called the Mad Max future world that he's talking about right like the yeah it's not it's not the uh the nightmare nightmare uh, universe he's talking about the the normal one so the, the 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 hall of justice or something should be up by now shouldn't it i would think so 100 percent. i mean and the fact that it's not i mean if, wow I, yeah I, I mean, even even the look. If you even want to just like give me the Watchtower, man. I mean, I'd be okay with the Watchtower, but there's got to be something. Mm -hmm. You know, you you can't have everybody just chilling in the Bat Cave. It's just. <laughs> and then what was all of this stuff about Bruce and Lois? Like, he needs me, and all of that kind of. Stuff. I, I'm telling you, man. That sounds that sounds like the rumors that I was hearing about how they end up. Having this kid and oh boy, he secretly meets with like. All right, let's go to page four, right? Unless you have anything else you want to say. No, man, I, I'm I'm invested in this. <laughs> let's figure this shit out. So let's see. All right, page four. I think this is page four. I hope this is in order. So the Justice League members unite with their family. Let me see if page five makes a little bit more sense because that's that's quite a leap. It does. It's like it just. It's none of the. It, I'm trying to think about it with each of the different sides, and none of them make sense with each other. I mean, maybe that's the way that Zach writes. Maybe that's why his, his films are so disheveled sometimes. Yeah, okay. So it has to be number four because... All right. So let's try this way. The Justice League members unite with their families. Wonder Woman and Mena Lipe arrive in... Fe okay, I have to do the voice. Um, arrive in Themyscira. Diana's unsure what her mother's reaction will be. 
but a tearful and overjoyed Hippolyta embrace, embraces her. The queen declares there will be a celebration unlike any other in Amazon history. Her daughter is home. In the oceans, Aquaman and Mera bring the final kingdom of the Seven, the Unseen, into their alliance. For the first time since Atlantis sank, it is once again united. In Central City, for the first time since he was a kid, there is no wall of glass between Barry and... This can't be the fucking... <laughs> it's, it's to be oh, it can end. be. It can be. <laughs> it has to be the end. All right. And his father, Henry Allen, is released from prison, exonerated. Barry's about to tell his father who he is. In Metropolis, Lois returns to Superman, tells him she will accept Clark is gone, but she has to go still on the trail of Lex. In Gotham, Batman returns from the wilderness, shaken by Riddler's pro proclamation. So this was the third one. All right. Intercut with Lois, discovering from General Swanzik that Lex has the three mother boxes. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Of course he does. <laughs> Why not? Lex activates his plan. At the Three Rivers, helicopters survey the area. Lex is on the scene, his team elsewhere, but in contact with Lex, uh, with him. Lex activity activates the boxes. His true plan to destroy the Justice League and take the secret power called the Anti-Life Equation for his own. It will give him power over all living life. The anti-life equation glows as Lex turns on the boxes. Cyborg blinks, feeling a horrible emptiness as the influx of data stops for the first time since he first went online. What? And a boom tube erupts in front of Lex, surprising him, emerging from the portal. Dessard, the horrific, sadistic servant of his master, Darkseid, who emerges behind him. Darkseid takes the power of the anti-life equation for himself. Superman versus Darkseid. In the Batcave, Superman, Batman, and Lois regroup. They learn of Darkseid's arrival. Superman tells Batman that this is uh, this is a fight among the gods. He's not, doesn't see himself as a fucking god. All right. She's my world, he tells Bruce. Protect her. Superman flies off to confront Darkseid. After Superman leaves, Bruce and Lois argue. Bruce knows she's pregnant. Lois ends the argument by telling Bruce, you're not the father. She tries to tell Bruce about what she's discovered with um, what Lex is planning, but he won't listen because he's so interested in her loins. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> no, that's me. That's, that was my little flourish there. Um, <laughs> at the Three Rivers... <laughs> At the Three Rivers, taking in Darkseid's arrival, Lex tells Darkseid that Darkseid has the power to kill Superman. Darkseid moves forward, acknowledging Lex. He says to Lex, I don't want him dead. I want Superman to submit. The girl says Lex, she's the key to breaking his spirit. Superman arrives and a battle with Darkseid erupts. Hmm. Maybe they they had bits to fill in. I this hope. Is so. <laughs> I'm because I mean we're jumping from like big piece to big piece, and it's like really, all right. Yeah, this is very staccato. I I don't know quite what to make of um, the bit where it's just like there's dark side and there's cyborg. I don't know how cyborg got there. Why he's there? Um, Cyborg could have boom tubed if he you know had that mother box technology inside of him. No, I know, but why would he think to go there to confront oh, anyone? Like, why is Dark Side coming? Where you know, like, there was no introduction to why even Dark Side has come here. You know, uh, I guess the anti life equation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a hot mess, man. That let, let's just call it what it is. It's a hot mess. Yeah, I know this because okay. So what does everyone have to say? Um, 
this is wrote by Jeff Johns. He was um, a collaborator in the whole process. G Jim Lee, uh, the drawings on the board. This is just a transcript from of that board. Who's he <laughs> calling you? Why are you calling you fucking dummy? It's unnecessary, isn't it? Who are you saying that to, Patel? Mm -hmm. I know this because uh, I, Zach revealed it on a live stream. Um, Terrio wasn't on board at the time when this was done. Okay. No, I get that. But, um, uh, and I know like Jeff Johns was involved, but like Jeff Johns, oh, to another guy. Okay. Sorry, man. I just was like, I didn't, I didn't understand. <laughs> like, just was like, you fucking dummy. Um, yeah. I hope you're not talking to one of uh, the people. Be peaceful in there. If you are talking to somebody else, um, yeah, like uh, I know that uh, Jeff Johns was involved, but like Jeff Johns is very hit and miss, so it doesn't surprise me that this could be part of his storytelling. It would, honestly, it would surprise me if this was like a, a Jeff Johns uh, a draft because Jeff Johns, I understand he's more of a comic book guy you know, the, the movie guy, but he knows these characters better than this, than to, to like draft something this radically different. Mm. Well, I, you know, like to be fair to the draft, I'm not saying, I don't see anything in it that says like, this is apart from Superman, that this is going against the fundamentals of the character. It's just Superman and Lois that seem to be like really messed up. Uh, actually, he seems to be doing an okay job with a few of them. I'm not really getting what Flash is doing in all of this. You yeah. know, Flash Cyborg seems to be doing. Yeah, Cyborg seems to be doing a lot. Batman seems to be doing a lot. Wonder Woman just has a side plot that doesn't seem to be connected to anything, but at least it's something. You know, like where you get to see Femascura again. Um, yeah. But like, what are your thoughts? Come on, tell me. Give me. Uh, I'm glad that Zack Snyder is no longer employed at Warner Brothers because this would have been absolutely <laughs> god awful. <laughs> I, I, I would have I would have sat through this movie. I would have gone back up to the ticket booth and I would have slapped the person behind the, the counter and said, give me back my money. You know, <laughs> I would have, you know, Tomlin from Game of Thrones. Yeah. I would have just walked up to a building like a window, just like that. Like Tomlin, just falling out, except it wouldn't have been that high because I don't really want to kill myself. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, like, uh, it's just, it's very, very, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting. I mean, like, I, it's kind of one of those things that I'm actually kind of curious to see. Um, in a way, like it's I such mean, a hot mess that I wouldn't even mind like an animated film version just to see what the fuck I want. Sure. But if he's doing it, I want it to be exactly what it was. Not, so I not, just, not any I just, like, oh, with hindsight, I'm not going to make Lois sure. bang Bruce. I, I want him to do an animated version of exactly what he was going to do. I, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And by the way, I just, uh, for what it's worth, I just Googled who wrote the Snyder Cut and it came up with Chris Terrio. So take that for what you will. The Snyder Cut. The, Snyder, the, the actual Snyder yeah, Cut. Yeah, no, Chris Terrio did did uh, write that. But I think yeah. I think what um, uh, Monal was saying was that um, that, when they were storyboarding this, it was Jeff Johns and Zack Snyder coming up with this story. Oh, yeah, I could totally see them uh, bouncing the ideas off of each other on storyboard. Yeah. I'm sure uh, that Superman, though, was uh, like that um, Jeff Johns would be treating Superman like this. That's that's what I'm shocked at. 
I am too. I am. I am too. Uh, Monel, I'm sorry. Uh, Zach is very much not in DC. This is his last hurrah. Uh, and, and if you if you believe that he's going to be in DC after this, uh, you, you should probably go see a therapist. <laughs> Guys, come on, we can all get along. Um <laughs> I mean Monel is starting to strike me as as a cultist. I, I have to I have to say. Um, you know, uh he, he seems uh like a uh Snyder fan, not a DC fan. So he's riding that Snyder cock, man. You know, like the Marvel fanboys ride that that Marvel cock, you know, uh he's riding that that Snyder cock. Wait, wait, wait. Let's Monel. Can you give us some idea of where your what what your position is? I don't know that that's true. I don't because he's saying a lot of things which are like confusing. So lol, lol Wonder Woman eighty four was produced by Zack Snyder. I think he's talking like to a cancer. Snyder, I don't want Zack Snyder uh, was given a producer credit on a lot of things just contractually. He didn't have anything to do with any of it. Yeah, I know, but like, so, uh, I don't get what his position is. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't. I I don't know if he's saying that he's he well, wants that Snyder. So you are uh you are. Please stop spamming. Above that, Monel says, "Happy cultist." So. Yeah, yeah, I think I have him pegged right. Oh, you're a happy cultist, right. Okay, well, well, you know, like, okay, so tell, well, I was going to say that, so you're, you're, you want Zack Snyder back after this, right? But I don't know that he is going to be back. And I think part exactly. of the problem is that, like, the, um, you know, it's been such a hassle, mm -hmm. um, you know, even, uh, like, once they actually said yes you would have thought like the snyder um fans would be happy but they've just been pushing for more and more stuff like now it's like restore the snyder verse and all of this kind of stuff and my thing is i don't understand just because there are a lot of fans of something and there aren't you know i think there's a lot of snyder fans but i don't think there's a significant amount where it's you know it's worth losing all the other side of DC's fandom, right? Monel, you are out of your goddamn mind. HBO Max spinoffs uh, of the Snyderverse are not coming. <laughs> HBO does not... HBO... Look, look Warner Brothers or, or AT&T has, has realized that they, they fucked up giving him the money because they're really, really, really worried about how poorly this is going to perform on HBO Max. Warner Brothers wants nothing to do with the Zack Snyder. So moving forward, the Snyderverse is going to be left in the dust and you cultists can suck it. I'm just saying. G4. <laughs> He's coming out with claws. I've never seen Sean so like aggressive. All right. I'm, uh, I, I can hear with these cultists every day on my channel, man. I'm tired of them. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like it, they they might continue the Snyderverse. You don't know that. Like if it's if it's successful, you know, like it's got. It's not going to be successful. You... It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's going to be. The, it's going to be the the worst decision that HBO has ever made. And it's because uh, AT and T doesn't know how to run a movie business. They're a phone company. Look, I I agree with you that like the Snyder like everything that has happened since must have given them pause. Like, mm. but I'm just saying if it does, if it is successful and if it is somehow good, because remember, this isn't Snyder's full vision. That's what I have no. to say to you. And it, that's it, what, that's what's going to annoy me because when, uh, you know, if it does get good reviews because, um, Jeff Johns was giving them notes. John Berg was giving them notes. Kevin Sujihara was saying, no, we're not having any more of this dark Superman anymore. So it then ends up doing well. And everyone's going to be saying, oh, see, Zack Snyder was a genius and he did all that. And it's like, no, it's because he got a lot of notes from the studio. And yeah. that helped him 
shape the movie into something good. So if you want another film that's actually good that everybody loves, you better hope that the studio puts him on a leash again. If 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 he is going to continue with anything on HBO Max, for instance. Well, if if uh, if they do continue the Snyderverse in any way. I would see them doing it in animation form. I don't see them doing live action, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, Monel HBO Max gave seventy million at least for Snyder uh, cut, and that was for a four day shoot. You know, where was the Snyder cut that Zack Snyder kept saying, and and uh, and Jason Momoa kept saying, Ray Fisher kept saying, "Yeah, man, I just saw the cut. It's great. It's ready to go." When HBO Max said, hey, yeah, we'll do your, your Snyder Cut, why wasn't it put on the air immediately? You know why? Because it was raw footage. There was nothing done CGI. So they yeah. had to take $70 million, shoot four minutes of extra footage, and the rest went into making Cyborg uh, look like he wasn't wearing half of a green leotard and, and everything else. And by the way, uh, I don't know if you've paused through the what scene. What do you hell know, read about the movie? I, what do you think? Mate, like, we do our research, dude. Mm -hmm. We do our research. Um, if, you, if you pause through the scenes of the trailer, the CGI in certain scenes, especially on Cyborg, look atrocious. So if this is the DC you want, mon -El, <laughs> then you're welcome to it. But this is not going to be the DC that's going to happen after Flashpoint. You're just going to have to deal with that, my friend. These are fighting words, man. These are like straight up fighting words. I am not as against it as as uh, you know, Sean is. I want to see what the movie does. I want to see I what do. the movie I, is. I first. But I'm sick and tired of people like Monel uh, shouting people with a difference of opinions down just because they don't see the eye, eye to eye with them. You know, mm. I'm curious to see what the has, this has he been on your channel before or something because it seems like the antagonism is high or something. No, no, I, if, uh, okay. if it has, I, I would have never uh, noticed somebody's in, insignificant as Monel in his comment. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go back to the, <laughs> let's go back to this uh, synopsis. So, oh, 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 no one claimed that the VFX were finished? Oh, please. Oh, my God. Get your head out your butt, man. Actually, I'll have to say this. Um, uh, Jason Momoa really implied that it was. Yes. He really, really implied that it was to the guy. It was like, there was a campaign. I mean, like, Zack Snyder played it kind of quite smart, a little bit dirty, if you ask me, yep. because he led his fans to believe there was a full version that could just be released. There's yep. no doubt that that was what he was doing, that was what he was implying. And then... You know, when they went to him and said, all right, just release what you have. He said, dude, I'm not doing it. I'd rather it just remain a myth. So he would have left you guys, right, not even being able to see anything of what his uh, um, vision was if they didn't, you know, pony up like 70 million for him to fix it. At least 70 million. He held them hostage, essentially. It's yeah. it, it's it's highly unethical, to be honest. I mean, it really yeah. is. Um, the only reason they agreed to it is because they needed something for HBO Max that would would bring in the subscribers. Yeah, I mean, I'm an unethical person, so I don't mind that it was highly unethical. <laughs> but it was highly unethical what he did. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I I don't you know. It's it's one of those things. I'm not against I'm not as against him as you are because I've enjoyed some of his work. I understand why you're against him though, and we can have a little discussion about that like after. Manel, um, uh, dude, this is my channel, and to bring up somebody's viewership is 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 just shows that you're a piece of shit. Uh, you know, come to my channel sometime. You know, I would love to debate you, but I know you won't show up because you're a pussy. I'll referee, bro. I'll referee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to, you could like. Oh, you can't jump on even now, can you? Because it's only two people who can can three people. Uh, I think it's only two. Uh, oh, anyway, I don't want you to jump on right now because I, I need to finish this. 
But like, uh, yeah, man, I'll referee that. Yeah. You want to yeah. jump on sometime, Monel? Bring, bring it, Monel. Bring it. You, you uh, come over to my channel, Sean Stack House Reacts. Bring, bring your your bag of bullshit, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So in the meantime, Lois tells Superman he has to warn the others. Lex has a plan. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just this. Just the writing is so ridiculous. Lex has uh, a plan. Uh, with information from Lois on Lex's Injustice League, Superman saves the League, stopping Maru from releasing the gas on Themyscira, Orm and Black Manta from killing Aquaman and Len from um, taking out Cyborg. Meanwhile, Bruce reveals Lois reveals to Lois, uh, although he's alive, he was hit. There's a darkness growing across his body. He's in pain, but they need to keep fighting. He tells Lois on as he boards the bat plane, I could have had a life outside of the cave with you. Bruce leaves um, as as across the world. I'm sure now I'm missing pages or something. Probably. Something's going on here. Um, Earth unites against Darkseid. Darkseid's full-scale invasion begins, and it's too much for the Justice League to handle on their own. But they won't have to. Led and inspired by Superman, the countries of the world come together. Armies, air forces, navies. Wonder Woman and the mother and the and her mother lead the Amazons off Themyscira to join the war. Um, in the oceans, Aquaman pleads to the Seven Kingdoms, declaring there is an eighth, the surface world, and they must be allies, not enemies. The Seven Kingdoms rise to join the Amazons and the surface. The entire world becomes a Justice League. In a Lord of the Rings like Finale, the history of the three armies that first battled Darkseid echoes itself today. The world of man, the Amazons, and the Atlantean. As the battle continues, Green Lantern... Wait, wait, wait. Have we not had a Green Lantern in this fucking universe yet? I uh, know this is the first mention, man. First That's of... ridiculous, bro. First mention. <laughs> what about Ma Martian Manhunter? I haven't even I haven't even seen. I thought really... he was supposed to be in this next movie. Like, surely he should have been part of you the. Think that he would have been brought on early on, right? Yeah, and Green Lantern, like he should have been in the first scenes, right? All right, uh, he should have been like off in Oa or something doing some shit. Um, so as the battle continues. Uh, Green Lantern joins the fight along with the alien Green Lantern Corps. It's the entire DC universe together for the very first time on a scale unlike any that's ever been uh, seen, battling to save the world together. During the battle, Hippolyta dies, saving her daughter, proud of what she's done. The Flash is able to move so quickly he masters his powers, existing in two places at once. Unstoppable, he takes out an entire army himself. Cyborg is, is able to overpower the mother boxes, taking control of them and triggering a chain reaction that destroys them, weakening Darkseid. It's ultimately a dying uh, Batman who sacrifices himself to save the League and the world, destroying Darkseid. Wait, Real. how does Batman die and sacrifice himself to destroy Darkseid? It's quite powerful, yo. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just oh, have no. Batman sacrifice himself to... Uh, <laughs> the Batman fanboy is strong in this, bro. Oh, facts. Facts. Yes, the sir. The Batman fanboy is strong. Oh, man, my internet's <laughs> unstable. I don't know if this is going to, like, mess up my uh, thing. But, um, wow. That was kind of epic in places, though, you have to admit. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was so a cool place, man, For sure. That was kind of epic with the with the armies of man and like fighting with the Amazons and the and the Atlanteans. That that would have that would have looked dope, and that would have come out before Endgame. That would have come out before Endgame. around the time of Endgame. Justice League Two would have, I think, come out before Endgame. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, mm -hmm. 
that is something you have to admit. But like, all right, let me go through like some of the points because some of there was a lot of bullshit in that. Um, so I didn't quite get like so Lois is with, uh, with information. Lois uh, Lexus injustice. Okay, so I like the bit where, like, uh, you know, obviously, um, Themyscira is being attacked and all of them are, are like, uh, At Atlantis is being attacked. All of that sounds like they would be cool scenes. But uh, yeah. what, I, what I didn't get was, um, so led and inspired by Superman, the countries of the world come together. You know, at this point, Superman has to be really fucking inspiring and he hasn't been. Like no, through the yes. whole, through the whole thing, and he's a cockold in this apparently. <laughs> so, yep, I don't know how inspiring he'll be like to the whole world. Uh, it's not just the suit that makes him inspiring; it's the actions that make him inspiring. And he's not a man. He even said that was one thing that pissed me off on the last page. I, I forgot to mention where he goes. This is a battle between gods. Superman doesn't see himself as a god. No, he doesn't. He sees himself as a small town boy from Ken Kansas. He's a farm boy, man. That that that's all he that's all he knows. He just happens to have these extraordinary abilities, but that does not define him. What defines him is uh, Jonathan Kent's uh, what he lives left with him. Yeah. 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 Exactly, that's it, and that's that's you know he he sees himself as a man, like as a, you know, and he just happens to have these powers, and he's like, since I have them, you know, like let me help people with it, you know, like let me, you know, might as well either, do you know what I mean? Because of like that, you know, training that he's got, or well, sorry, not training, but like moral kind of you know instilling of uh, morals that he has from Jonathan Kent, as you said. So yeah. I just don't like when he talks like that, like in this. It, it, I think it, I think, I don't know that Zack Snyder understands that that's, that's pushing us away from Superman. You want Superman to feel as close, you know, like to one of us as possible, right? That's, that's his whole thing. You know, Batman is more the aloof one, you know, I, he's hey, the I more think, scratch one. I think you're right. I don't so know, I, man. That was that was a whole lot of. I mean, I'm gonna need some time to uh, to wrap my my brain around all to of to digest it. all of it. Whew. There's one more page. Okay, one let's do more. it. Let's do it. I don't see how any of this is in order because this is all of the pages that were there. So I have no idea how this can be in order. Like, no matter how I put these together, they all <laughs> would have just been um, a mess. Uh, so in the aftermath, Diana becomes the new queen of the Amazons, leading them to rejoin the outside world and restore and inspire peace. With the Amazons at her side, Diana negotiates peace between the countries of the world, unlike anything in history. So this... This I like, but I think Diana should have been more involved in this whole film. It sounds like she wasn't really doing shit. Yeah. But, like, this I like, but Diana should have been doing this shit from the, the beginning. I agree. This is not, like, that's what, she, that's what her place is, to be an ambassador of peace. Um, Arthur is to rec is uh, recognized by the kingdoms as the true king that has helped uh, unite the world. The skepticism over his human heritage not only gone, but replaced with admiration. Yep. Okay. Cyborg evolves to become a god of the digital age and able to transform himself to look human again. All right, him and his godlike shit again. Uh, Lois warns Bruce's death. Superman looks closer. There's a page missing. There's definitely a page missing because I, you, you're right. I heard about that whole bit about Superman having to um, find out like that uh, Lois. We'll talk about that after because we know we both yeah. know that. So 
Yeah. We'll talk about that after. Um, so, oh, here we go. The end. Oh, right. No, no, no. Lois mourns Bruce's death. Superman looks closer, realizing that Lois is carrying Bruce's child. Lois admits it, but he already knows. Maybe he always did, he says. <laughs> he always knew he was a cockle. He saw what he needed to, but he doesn't shy away. Instead, he embraces Lois and her unborn child. He has a reason to be Clark again. <laughs> 20 years later, 20 years later, after a memorial comm commemorating the Batman sacrifice, Commissioner Barbara Gordon asks Lois, what are you going to tell him? Referring to telling Lois's son the truth about his father. For the first time in decades, crime is returning to Gotham and it needs the Batman again. Various Justice League members like Martian Manhunter present. Lois takes her son to the Batcave and reveals the truth that his father was Bruce Wayne. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So Superman's been fathering him all this time and she just, like, drops that on him, like, so that... That's but cold, I mean, bro. All of that's, that's for, for nothing. Is that? All of that's for nothing unless unless this kid has been training, training. in all... Like, everything that Bruce Wayne had been training in at such a young age. Know. You know, I, I mean, sure, okay, maybe you could... You could uh, give him like a Terry McGinnis suit, you know, that like amplifies his strength and, mm. and something like that, you know, as long as he knows like basic, uh, like self-defense and what have you. But that is weak as hell, man. Yeah. And in Gotham rising from the shadows and out into the moonlight, we have an all new Batman. Of course, Batman has to finish it. Of, uh, of course. Of course. That was trash. That, that was utter trash. I don't know what the fuck was that Superman Lois like thing right at the end as well. Like I look, I'm going to say this, I want to see this as an animated film. I want to I want everyone to see this as a fucking animated film. Just because it's so bonkers that like anybody even thought of this. You're going to get Lois pregnant. So it all hinges around like some Maury Povich, Jerry Springer fucking, oh, it's my, it's your daddy, it's his daddy, it's, you know, like, or he, you know, he's the daddy, you know, like, what the fuck is going on? This is the Justice League. You know, these epic know. characters. Um, I can't believe it comes down to like a Jerry Springer story at the center of it. It does. And, and, and unfortunately, that's all Hollywood really knows how to do right now. But it's more than that. It's the it's the Batman fanboyism. That's it. Oh, yeah. I, it's oh, like, God. let's make Batman cool. How can we make him cool? We'll have him bang Lois. Yeah, like, you know, it's just... It's, it's kind of stupid. He, he's cool enough. You don't need to, like, put Superman down to make... Batman. No, and that's the thing. You don't have to tear any of these characters down to build any of them up. You know, they, yeah. they all stand on their own. It's something that is. You're right. Is a is um a uh it's a recent trend in Hollywood. Like uh, Supergirl's stronger than Superman, right? Like in the TV show, right? And like Supergirl, he's like you're the real hero and all of this kind of bullshit. It's like, dude, like. You don't need to do that to make Supergirl cool. No, no you don't. Do her own thing and be heroic and whatever. You don't need to um, do that. Um, and then, yeah, like they do it a lot these days, and it's it's really annoying. It, you, you need to build all the characters up to be as awesome as possible. Mm -hmm. Really, they did it in Justice League with the Justice League to make Superman look like super powerful. They just had him beat the crap out of everyone like they were just like children as opposed to like the strongest you know right characters in and 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 like uh the, when, when i mean say what you want about justice league but when when superman was tracking flash in flash time you know like his eyes were like locked in with his as the flash was like running at super speed that you saw the flash of space face he's like oh shit he can see me I, yeah. I, I thought 
I thought that was great. You like that? Well, I liked that bit, just that bit. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Superman could catch up with Flash bothered me. The fact that Flash couldn't do anything except like trip and fall bothered me. Like he couldn't well, face Flash shit. He faster, could, but but, he but Superman can see, and you know, it makes sense that Superman could see in at least quasi flash time. I mean, if if Flash was running like the fastest he probably could, you know, Superman wouldn't be able to track that. But he was just he, he was just running fast enough to to get around, and Superman was able to. Uh, it makes oh, sense. I I, I I understand that that makes sense, right? Like yeah. But what I'm saying is that you need to give the um, Superman, uh, sorry, the 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 Flash, like a good fight with Superman. Like you can't just not. It doesn't have to be like you know. Flash is getting hits on Superman. But what I mean is, like, you know, Flash can do some shit, right? He can phase through stuff. He can he can um, yeah. manipulate, like, um, particles in, like, you know, like in, in structures and turn them into explosives. He can do a bunch of shit. And, lightning, and yeah. if you're trying to sell us on, oh, the Flash is awesome, oh, Wonder Woman's awesome, you know, Cyborg's awesome, then you have to let them have like at least something like a yeah. little, like, you know. The problem is that, that, that Flash, you know? that Barry Allen didn't even know how to use his powers. He did. I mean, he he he, he didn't even know about the Speed Force. Yeah, but he even says it in the film himself. himself like uh, when Batman is like, "You're fast," he goes, "Oh, you know, that's an oversimplification." So he obviously knew something. He knew that he could do more than run. Yeah, but he but he didn't know like how to tap into it, and you what know, do you mean he, by that statement then? Be, because uh, there, I, what could he? I believe, I, I believe that uh, Barry Allen in in uh, Justice League does not is not aware of the Speed Force. Yo, Monel, chill with that shit, man. I give a fuck what Sean thinks, and a lot of people uh, on his channel give a fuck what he thinks. He's very respectful, usually. You're, you're obviously annoying him. So chill with <laughs> that shit. Um, it's all good, man. I, 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 I challenged him to come onto my channel, and, and, and he didn't say anything. So <laughs> just, just like a true uh, Snyder cultist. Yeah, look, and I'm respectful to everyone on my channel, everybody who watches and whatever, but just like, let's chill with the, all of this stuff. It's just a movie in the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Like, The Flash. No, man, I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go again. I thought that that scene was the worst scene in the movie for me. And I know oh maybe as Superman, as Superman fans, you know, like, you're a Superman fan, and worse, worse me is like what they're doing to Superman, it, what they did to Superman in BVS they did to the Justice League in, oh. in Justice League, right? Okay. Making Superman look like a fucking dullard who would, like, get shot twice by kryptonite, uh, you know, cannons just to make Batman look extra cool. Yeah. I don't like that shit. These are fucking, you know, there are Flash fans out there who've been waiting for the day, like, they would see, oh, yeah, like, I know, like, Flash will be able to speed around Superman. Like, they they played with their toys in their bedroom, like, you know, what Flash could do and how Superman would stop them. And they just left their gutted, like, oh, all right. Do you know what no, I mean? You're right. you're right. I mean, he he is the fastest man alive. And, you know, clearly he is faster than Superman. Um and I, I I liked at the end, you know, where they they uh, started off on the race, you know, comic book accuracy, you know, that's cool. Um, yeah, like the race bit, the race bit was cool, but I don't even think, yeah, go on, go on, go on. Sorry, you know, I, I was just uh, like little 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 uh, little pieces of fan service, not much in 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 uh, the Justice League movie. Um, you know, towards the end, the end, like. The, the last maybe 10 minutes of the movie were probably the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked when Superman came back, but I just think that Superman was too OP. Like, to me, it's like, you know, you're, you're taking the piss where, you, like, Superman's flying 
faster than fucking Flash when Flash is like saving that family. You know, it's like, dude, you, you, Superman don't fly as fast as the Flash when Flash is like trying to run, save the family. It's just, well, I guess see, maybe it's because that, maybe, that's maybe, an argument. That, 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 that's been an argument between uh, Flash fans and Superman fans for a long time when, you know, it's always like, well, is Superman slower than the Flash on a foot race uh, but, and faster than him if he were to race him while he was flying? You know, um, that, 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 is, that is a constant back and forth between Superman and Flash fans. To me, Flash is more powerful than Superman, ultimately. That's how I see it. Like, I've always seen that. That, for me, is the more interesting dynamic, where Flash is really the most powerful on the team. He's, 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 he's not as, he doesn't have the belief in himself yet that he can, you know, he needs to work up to that power. But ultimately, if when he lets loose, he's the most powerful. That's how I see it. That is an interesting. Uh, that is an interesting view. Um, I mean, have you not come across that kind of way of thinking in the comics before? Because that's that's something. No, not really. Because I mean, yeah, super. Like the Flash can he he can run and run and run around Superman, but but all it takes is once for Superman to get a hold of the Flash and and Superman can rip him apart. No, look, super. Look, Flash can time travel. He can. Um, he runs so fast that he can do. <laughs> In he, Superman, he, the movie he, Superman time traveled. He, he reversed. Power, he can hit with the power of a, a an exploding dwarf star or whatever the fuck it is. Right? He's literally can. Superman sh- has collapsed a black it. hole in his hands. Yeah, but that's the. This is what I'm talking about. That you know. <laughs> this is the problem, right? Superman fans. Uh, and I understand it, right? You want to see your guy win or whatever. Oh, dude, I but love when the Superman. Love is, the when match. Superman is like that, that's when he's unrelatable. That I is agree. when he's too OP. And, and people when he sneezes right. away a galaxy, yeah, an entire I, galaxy. I hate that. And yeah. the reason they do that, the only reason, is not to make Superman look cool, but to make Batman look extra cool when he beats Superman. That's why they make him that powerful. Mm-hmm. It's only to make Batman like Superman should be, you know, like there should be some limits, you know, on how he uses his power. Because the reason Flash can run so fast is because of his access to the speed force. Right. If Superman did the same thing according to physics, he would destroy the universe. If he went at light speed, right, it would it, it would create um thing because he's not protected by the speed force it would just act the way like things in the physical world act and if you have something racing at um uh, light speed in the real world it would burn up everything that it comes into uh you know uh, confrontation with so really superman things. should be like you know supersonic speed not not like you know, not like Flash to me. So that's why Flash, because of his speed powers, can do so much more, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I see where you're coming from on that, and and I can't do, I can't completely disagree. I mean, their their power sets are completely different. You know, they they can do similar things. You know, as far as like feats of speed, but um, you know, uh, yeah, Fla- Flash does have the title fastest man uh, alive for a reason you know i, I mean that's how that's how we're going to get flashpoint he most most likely because he's probably going to go home and or go back and try to uh save his mom you know uh like like he did in the comic book and and uh that screws things up i mean he 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 did he did flashpoint on the cw tv show and he he screwed everything up in the yeah. timeline that he do you know so yeah yeah, yeah no, he can I mean- do time travel I mean, and also, it's not just, it wasn't just Flash, it was like the whole Justice League. You can't do that to the whole Justice League, I'm sorry. Like, I don't care if you're Superman or not. You don't hold Wonder Woman and Aquaman up like they're fucking nothing, and they can't No, Wonder Woman should have smacked them around, man. She she should have been brawling. 
Yeah, that should have been. And think about it this way. What makes the better scene? Like, I'd rather see a big ass fight until they knock some sense into Superman. Right, exactly. That would have been the better scene. Even if Superman wins in the end, the mm-hmm. Justice League actually being able to do something. And honestly, it's almost like that if that scene is in the film as it is, I'm not going to like this film. I can tell you. Like, and it won't, and it won't, film. And it won't yeah. be it won't be as a um as a as a critic like as as like a fair criticism of the film, like as I'm just being objective and being a film. I won't like the film simply as a fanboy. I'll be like, okay, fuck it. Now, I I, I highly believe that that film will, that that scene will not be in the film because I I am almost certain that the Joss shot that scene and mm-hmm. uh, no Joss scenes are going to be in this movie. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. That That is one scene that I'm kind of like, I've got my eye on basically. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So uh, Anishka J- Jaswal uh, says, Kong fan better than Snyder cultists. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyway, um, so there's that. And then obviously the affair thing just at the end here where like, uh, yeah, Lois is, is telling um, Superman. Oh, sorry. Lois is. Yeah. Lois basically admits to Superman about uh, her baby is just so weird to me. Like it's the weirdest thing in this whole film. And that being a centerpiece would have just like ruined the whole uh, you know story for me. I wouldn't have been able to. Oh, get for it. sure, for sure. I mean, oh. mm. so I mean, Batman at the end of BVS said, "I failed him in life, but I won't fail him in death." Um, and then you 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 go and and you bang Lois. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, guys, like subscribe. Um, and obviously when it's finished, do comment, but yeah, exactly. I mean, it got, it contradicts what he said at the end of the movie. Yeah. It's unnecessary. I don't, I'm just trying to get into Zack Snyder's head on that. You know, it's like, do you think he's just unconscious bias towards Superman? He just, he can't help himself. Or do you think it's like a conscious Kind of like fuck Superman fans, like he's trolling. I, I honestly, I mean, when, when, when uh, the news broke that uh, Zack Snyder was going to do Man of Steel, he he made some very um, poor comments towards Superman. Like, I mean, it was clear that that he did not like the character. So I think it's very conscious. Do you mean on the Watchmen? Like when he was talking about Watchmen, how he wanted to tear Superman down, and you know, Superman. Oh, the enemy yeah, right I guess, now. I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it was in the Watchmen. Like, yeah. where he, you know, he's saying, you know, something like, you know, he would like to, you know, you know, fuck Superman in the ass and shit like that. You know, yeah, and, uh, he wants to tear him down. But uh, yeah. to be fair, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt in those comments and just say, like, look, he's talking about like the fact that Watchmen is deconstructing all these superheroes. So surely Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and all of those guys should have been the enemy um, in that sense. But I don't really see why you'd even look at it like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, Right. I mean, Watchmen is set in, in, in a completely alternate universe. Mm. Uh, you know, um, you you if if you had the Watchmen in like the Prime Universe with with Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, there were, there would be problems. Mm. Now, of course, Doctor Manhattan would have the final say, right? Because, I mean, who in the Justice League is going to be more powerful than Doctor Manhattan? But, uh, yeah, I Flash. don't know. Flash. <laughs> you think so? Flash. Yeah, I do. I do. I yeah. think Flash is the only one. Who could give Doctor Manhattan any problems? In fact, 
but ultimately do you think flash would lose because i mean dr manhattan is like you want to talk about op dr manhattan dr manhattan's uh, op is shit but i don't know how he interacts with i suppose that's been answered now with uh with um the uh watchmen justice league crossover yeah but before mm-hmm. just if you were just going off the watchmen comic yeah um and what he does in that then you, all you could really say is like he's the most powerful person on that earth, and mm-hmm. you don't know um, how he'd interact with other powerful beings, especially Martian Manhunter as well might give him problems because of the telepathy. Mm. That's true, and yeah, uh, I forgot about Martian Manhunter. Yeah, so maybe Martian Man- Manhunter, um, maybe. Oh, Superman, sure. Wonder Woman, um, Batman, Aquaman are fucked in that fight. Like I don't see yeah. how they're how they're doing anything. But, uh, Constantine, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, with uh, the magic. So you don't know how that he interacts with that. Yeah, maybe, maybe Zatanna uh, but, and Constantine. Um, may, maybe. Uh, oh, uh, Rachel Ghoul, maybe. No, why? What's Rachel Ghoul gonna do against him? Well, I mean, you, you know, he he's 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 been around for 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 millennia, so mm. you know he knows like uh, he knows these incantations and and what have you. So you know he well, might be of some use. Well, the problem is, uh, Doctor Manhattan knows everything that's gonna happen to him. Yeah, unless like he's surrounded by tachyon particles or whatever that's the only way so anyway uh, you know we're going off we're going off uh off of the course. place now but uh so I, i'm gonna be honest there were parts of that i really liked i like the epic battle at the end as well and sure. i think that would have looked super cool <laughs> like from a you know a Zack snyder shot kind of big time action scene um, I didn't really get what Wonder Woman was doing in there. Was she dead, or because was was any of this the nightmare vision? I didn't get that. If it was the nightmare vision or not, it, if it was, it didn't seem like it to me. To be honest with you, yeah, it was kind of all over the place, and I'm not. I, I think I must have missed pages because I remember some stuff about um, Flash time traveling and. And, and and bigger scenes setting up like this whole um, relationship between Superman and Lois and Batman. So I'm pretty sure like most of them were some, so like most of the Justice League was supposed to be dead, right? Like Dark Side had killed them and then Flash no, had come yeah. back. So that was a problem for me because I was like, okay, so you're going to have Batman, Cyborg, and Flash being the only ones alive. And they're like trying to... Because that, to me, is like, that's whack, isn't it? You're like, this is a Justice League movie, right? <laughs> and I know you might want to add stakes, but he, he had a, like, there was a whole movie or something where those guys were dead in his version. Well, like, yeah, I mean, it, it's just as it's just as whack as as having a Justice League movie and not having Superman in it until like the last twenty minutes. Right. I, I yeah. mean, <laughs> who does that? Yeah. Who, and, I mean, and, and and is Superman at that point? He's controlled by Darkseid during that whole period, right? So it's Flash, um, Batman, and and um and Cyborg basically trying to go back in time to warn Lois mm-hmm. uh, or something. I don't know. Or warn Bruce about Superman or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that was that, that scene from, what, BVS. Uh, you know, she's the key, you know. And, oh, I, I'm too soon. Like, I'm too late or too soon or whatever it was. And, and yeah. Mm. So there, there's so much, so much shoddy storytelling that, like, even when you put watch the movies back to back to back, you're mm. you still have like searing plot holes. You're like, well, what, 
what about this? You know, I mean, I, I don't understand where you're going. You just completely, you, you set this up and you just didn't come back. Right. I know. So I was just thinking that, um, you know, having a whole kind of, like, if they were going to do that, I would accept it only one way. If it's only cyborg and flesh, right? The fact okay. that he's put Batman in there, yeah, that offends me because <clears throat> now you really are just like you know, it's it, it's plot armor for Batman. Um, you're using plot armor to keep him in there all the time because I feel you know, because you know what established- I was just offended uh, when. They made the first Justice League, Justice League Dark animated movie, and Batman was like like the prime character in it. I'm like, really? You you've you've got to you've got to have Batman and Justice League Dark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just pushing Batman into situations that he shouldn't naturally be in. Right. And you know, if it was just Cyborg and Flash, like all the rest of the Justice League got like murdered or whatever you know, and they just had them for like, let's say half a movie where they're mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to sort out the timeline together. That actually then, might be interesting. Yeah. Then I would be like, Oh, okay. Like, because they know they need their leaders, right? They know they need right. wonder woman, um, Batman and Superman to be able to like sort dark side out. Mm-hmm. Then I would be like, okay, you know, then you're putting respect on all of their names because you know, all right, you need the, you need the three yep, to be able to really like sort this guy out. But like just having uh, Batman there using cyborg, like his, you know, his own personal Swiss army knife. Right. <laughs> and then, and then flash just, you know, it, it just, it, it doesn't do anything for me that, that aspect of the story. I, I mean, quite honestly, I like, go on. I was just going to say, quite honestly, most of, of that, that story treatment uh, was embarrassing to me as a DC fan. Mm. Mm. I can see that. I can see that. I'd be willing, I'd just be interested to see how all of the connective tissue of that came together, but definitely not as a movie. No. You know, like, you people just going, imagine why imagine. did Warner Brothers do this? Because right. they split fans. Don't Imagine make- that movie would have come out and then Marvel would have just been like, f- see, see what Warner brothers is doing. I mean, they, they don't, they don't have a handle on, on, on their character or the, un- their characters of the universe. And it, at that point in time, I would have probably just, you know, I would have checked out. I, yeah, me too. I, I wouldn't have wanted to, but I've been like, but you, you guys have given me no choice. You know, I, I've supported everything that, uh, you know, the Snyder versus throwing at me. I've paid to go see it, you, you know, uh, some of it multiple times. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if that, if that were to become, um, phew. well, this is what they don't understand. This is what they don't understand. Like, um, Snyder fans as well. Like if you create a universe with a divided fandom, this is what happens. You get like people who passionately love it, people who passionately hate it, and it's conflicting and it doesn't allow... The reason the MCU is so, um, you know, strong is because the fan base are united in their belief behind... I don't like all of the MCU films. Ah. I think a lot of them are like source, to be honest. Um, But the fandom is connected and unified in like this... is that they're treating their characters all with respect. Now, they've done a hell of a job over the past 11 11 years. And now on the, sorry, I'm putting the wrong uh, thing up, quote here. Every quote seems to be horrible. All right, so I'll leave the quotes off. Anyway, (laughs) um, um, yeah, but... Do you get what I mean? Like, you can't make a Superman film where you divide old Superman fans and then create new Superman fans or yeah. fans of this new iteration. Yeah. And 
um, you know, and expect that there isn't just going to, you're, you're just going to create this civil war between the fandom. And it's right. not We've good. Seen it in it's Star not Wars. Good. Why do we need it anymore? We, we saw Star Wars just completely split down the middle between yeah. the, the OG fans and the Disney fans. And, you know, uh, we, 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 I mean, I remember when fandom used to be something that we could all celebrate, you know, we might, we might not agree, but we don't have to agree because it's fandom. We can interpret it our own way, but you know, here on Twitter, you know, everything, you know, ha if, if you don't agree, you're going to get shouted down. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, that again, we need a DC universe that everyone's on board with. And if it was like, the only way to tell this story was to do these controversial things, then maybe I'd understand. But there is no reason that you have to make the center of your story that that Batman has, has um, you know, uh, uh, basically parented Lois's child. There's just no and, reason for it. And then it and, ends with a new Batman. And it ends with a new Batman. That's just weird, weird stuff, you know. Um, and uh, you know, also the same can um, be said of. And it's so rushed, isn't it? Like, what? Yeah. Are you, where would you go after this? So Batman will just be his son, and then. I, I mean, I would assume this would have to be the end of Zach's like five film vision or whatever it was. You know, but also the end of the universe. You can't. Yeah, you, you, you'd have to reboot. You'd have to reboot, like a yeah. hard reboot. Yeah. Um, he's, like, finishing everyone's storylines, you know, like, taking it in directions that probably directors of the individual movies would be like, dude, Zach, yeah. you know, maybe I want to do something with this character different to w what you're, you know, kind of going with. You know, hopefully exactly. there would have been a new person on Superman. Like, you like, according to this plan, you couldn't have any other Superman movies, like individual Superman movies. No. Because he's so caught up, entangled in this story. Yeah, dude. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bizarre rush to the end, you know, like... So this uh, makes me even no more... Point, no... Yeah, absolutely. The, the I mean, you you could have you could have you could have saved everything if you'd have just put Flashpoint like somewhere in the story, you know. Um, but uh, this is make this is gonna make me more interested uh, in the Snyder Cut to see exactly what it is. I mean, sure. I, I mean, what about, it, what about Green Lantern not being there? Martian Manhunter wasn't right there. in this whole fucking synopsis. They didn't play. How, how, how do you do that? I mean, you have you have two of like some of the like most character or powerful characters in DC, and and they're no shows. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, have you got like anything else you want to like comment on in this or? Uh, so I, I I did like some some of the ideas, yeah, but I mean it's it's like reading this just just re re reminds me of like the the um the documentary I saw about the the um uh, Superman Lives or something about the Kevin Smith uh, script that he was writing back in the nineties, you know, uh, for Superman and. Mm. It, John Peters wanted like all this outlandish stuff. He wanted Superman to fight like a big spider, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. And just reading, like reading and hearing some of this stuff, man. I, <laughs> this was for, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the director of the uh, Burton, Tim Burton, um, version of the Batman, right? 
Uh, yeah, the, uh, for oh, sorry, was, version um, of the super, the Superman. Yeah, right? it was Bur- Burton Superman. Yeah, mm-hmm. that had some really interesting like ideas as well. Like you know the way, like the way he was going to show Krypton and stuff like that was kind of interesting. But you're right, I altogether, like it, to Burton's uh, Superman. That that I mean, that would be interesting. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it makes me wonder if like ninety percent of the time. These people that are getting paid uh, like large amount of money, they just like turn in like bullshit like this. And then it's the other people's jobs to just kind of, you know, uh, pull what they can and scrape together what they can and make it as cohesive as possible. You know, I mean, I I have to, it's, it's a, the process is better than that, man. Well, I mean, for me, the biggest thing was just you don't have Greenland and you don't have uh, Marsh, like at least Greenland, at yeah. the very least Greenland, but you don't have Martian man on it. This Superman, Super Five Arc thing doesn't seem to, you, there, where where did he become Superman exactly? Just because he right. inspired the world to fight behind him or something for some bizarre reason, even though he's been evil and he's been, you know, so that didn't really make sense to me. Um, so that, that, that isn't like the classical Superman. Um, and then you've killed most of the Justice League in one film and just made like one of the films basically a Batman movie, right? Where like Flash and Cyborg are just being told what to do by Batman. Pretty much. That that's its respect on a high high level. Like I don't mind killing off the Justice League at a certain point, but you you that should be like you know for like fifteen minutes of the film, and then or like twenty minutes of the film, and then you know Flash has to like sort it out, and then yeah, you know, like then they figure out how to like avoid that fate. That, that. And, and, and since there wasn't any type of hierarchy put in place, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like with the, the watchtower, you know, um, John, uh, was always on monitor duty, you know, and he would, he would dispatch assignments to wh- whoever, you know, and, and, uh, you could even do the same with the hall of justice, man. You know, you, you needed like a central base of operation to where you, you could dole out assignments and, and you you put this person with this person, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, there was so much they left out, so yeah. much. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. But um, in the absence of anything else, I will. I can uh, leave it there. Um, yeah. That was our epic discussion of um, what happened. <laughs> I don't know if we got it in order, uh, but. Uh, we got it's hard to tell, out. honestly. <laughs> I can't see how you, like any of those could have gone in any different place and it still would have made as much sense as... I agree completely. The other... Um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming on. Um, it's yeah. Sean Stackhouse. Please do subscribe. I will leave his details um, in the comments or in the description box. Um, and yeah, like really, really appreciated you. Uh, I know it's like, it's been a long day for you. Uh, oh, it's so all good, man. Really, it's all really good. Appreciate you coming on. Um, and Happy. yeah. Um, and thanks again, guys for commenting, uh, for your passionate and at <laughs> times, um, controversial statements, <laughs> comments, box. um, and yeah.